Hello, a warm welcome from SGT University. I am Dr. Arpita Suri from Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences. Today we will be learning about hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin comes from two words, heme and globin. Heme is a Greek word which means blood and globin is a Latin word which means globus or sphere. Now the learning objectives. Describe the structure and functions of hemoglobin. Describe the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide by hemoglobin. List the different types of hemoglobin. Discuss the oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin. Structure of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is made up of four polypeptide chains, two alpha chains and two beta chains and in the center of the polypeptide chain is present heme molecule. Structure of heme. Heme is a planar structure which is formed by four pyrrole rings which are joined by methane bridges and hence it is called protoporphyrin ring. In the center there is an iron ion in the ferrous form which conjugates with the protoporphyrin ring. Ferrous ion binds to globulin. There are certain histidine residues around the heme molecule which are of importance. First is the proximal histidine or the F8 molecule and then is the distal histidine or the E7 molecule. The iron is present in ferrous form so it has 6 valency and it can form coordinate linkage with 4 nitrogens of the pyrrole ring, 1 nitrogen of the imidazole group of histidine and another oxygen of the molecular oxygen. So we learnt about the key histidine residues and now we will learn about the function of hemoglobin. What are the functions of hemoglobin? It helps in the delivery of oxygen from lungs to tissues. It transports carbon dioxide from tissues to lungs and it acts as a buffer in erythrocytes. So how does the exchange of gases in lungs takes place? So the oxygen that we inhale comes into the alveoli and through the alveoli it binds to the hemoglobin and it forms oxygenated hemoglobin. Then deprotonation of hemoglobin occurs. This H positive ion binds with bicarbonate ion to form carbonic acid. In the presence of carbonic anhydrase, this dissociates into carbon dioxide and water. The carbon dioxide can be exhaled out into the air. There is a shift of chloride ion also in this process. The bicarbonate ion in the cell when comes inside is followed by the exit of chloride ion to maintain the electroneutrality of the cell. Similarly, this kind of exchange also happens in the tissues. In the tissues, the carbon dioxide which is a waste product binds with water to form carbonic acid in the presence of carbonic anhydrase. This dissociates to form H positive ion and bicarbonate ion. The H positive ion combines with hemoglobin. The protonized hemoglobin has less affinity for oxygen. As a result, the oxygen is released from the hemoglobin and is delivered to the cells. Now an important point here to remember is the bicarbonate ion 
which is generated by the dissociation of carbonic acid is exited out of the cell which is followed by the entry of chloride ion inside the cell again to maintain the electroneutrality of the cell. Now we come to the types of hemoglobin. There are embryonal hemoglobins which are present up till the first trimester of pregnancy. Then there is fetal hemoglobin which is composed of two alpha and two gamma chains and it forms in the second trimester and is present up to two years. Beyond two years it is present only in the amount of 0.5 to 0.8 percent of the total hemoglobin present in the adult. Then we come on to adult hemoglobin or HbA1 which is composed of the two alpha two beta chains that we have discussed earlier. It forms immediately after the birth and is present till the end of the lifespan. It is present in 96 to 98 percent of the total amount of hemoglobin. And then there is delta hemoglobin which is HbA2. HbA2 this is the delta hemoglobin which is composed of two alpha and two delta chains. It is also adult hemoglobin and is present in the amount of 1.5 to 3.2 percent of the total hemoglobin. Cooperative effect. The hemoglobin shows a positive cooperative effect. So binding of first molecule of oxygen increases the affinity to the second molecule of oxygen two times. Binding of second molecule of oxygen increases the affinity four times to the third molecule of oxygen. And binding of third molecule of oxygen increases the affinity 18 times to the fourth molecule of oxygen. On the binding of the oxygen molecule, there are breaking of salt bridges between the different subunits of hemoglobin. This results in the transition of the tight form of hemoglobin to the relaxed form of hemoglobin which has more affinity to oxygen molecule and hence such effect is observed. The oxygen dissociation curve. The oxygen dissociation curve is a curve on which the x-axis is oxygen tension in the form of partial pressure of oxygen and on y-axis is the percent saturation of hemoglobin. When the oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin is observed, a sigmoid shaped curve is seen. The dotted line in the graph represents the P50 value. The P50 value is the partial pressure at which the hemoglobin is 50% saturated. And for hemoglobin, this partial pressure of oxygen is 26 millimeters of mercury. So today we learned about hemoglobin. And the next time we will explore about the topic myoglobin. Till then, keep learning, keep growing and see you next time.